y'all. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, I haven't seen you in a while, have I? And it's so glad to be I'm so glad to be here with you guys. We're going to end Genesis and start Exodus today. And um, I think we've had a good time in the book of Genesis myself. I hope y'all are having a blessed week. Um, my sister was here yesterday and she and I um, went out shopping and so we went to um, let's see we went to I'm trying to think of the stores we went to <laughs> the first store we went in was um, Kirkland's and then we went into um, I forgot which store we went into but it was too expensive so we left and then we went to um bales but just for a minute y'all know i love bales and she got her some i believe it was cool water blue or something like that cologne she says it's like 40 dollars but they had it for 14 dollars so she got some of that but anyway we spent so much time in five below it was crazy five below is a store that carries things that are five dollars or less and they cater to kids, you know, and teenagers. And so, oh my gosh, I got a lot of footage in Five Below. And I plan on posting it for you guys tomorrow. Because they had some really cool things in there. Me and her just loved it so much. We stayed in there. I bet we were in there at least an hour and a half. And then we went out to eat in Amy Medicine Town. And we got to go eat. It was nice. We had a good time together. And um, I told her I enjoyed spending time with her. So that was a really good day yesterday. By the time I got home, I was exhausted. With that said, me and Chris got up and went back out today and did some Christmas shopping for the girls, mostly looking for sweaters. And my girls like sweaters that are thick. And they really like their daddy's sweaters way more than anything else. So I wound up buying them quite a few sweaters out of the men's sections because you know men do have beautiful sweaters um i got them several izod sweaters today and you know they have the prettiest cable knit sweaters and they have pretty designs and they're thick and they're they're just beautiful i don't know why they can't make women's sweaters that pretty and I can remember being a younger woman and I always liked the men's sweaters better even then when me and Chris were young and I was and I was quite little I wore a lot of these clothes I did but with that said I'm tired again I told Chris I said whoa my legs are worn out but um, tonight we're reading in Genesis and we're gonna finish it up and talk a little bit about the first chapter in Exodus and um, so Genesis comes to a close tonight with Isaac um, passing away, and then Jacob also passes away. So, um, I'm just going to hit the highlights with you. We have had a good time here in Genesis. We've learned a lot about people and a lot about how um, we all struggle and have a hard time. Um, we've learned that we can be blessed by God even if we are in a trial. Sometimes he even forms a trial as a blessing for later. Um, we've just seen a lot. We've seen him create the world. We've seen him um, end the, the world with the flood. We've seen him start all over with Abraham. Um, and so now we are with Isaac has passed away. But now before Isaac passes away, Jacob does talk to his dad and asks him to bless his children and and so he does not only does he bless his two sons but he also blesses the younger instead of the older with more blessings and kind of bothered their dad jacob was like daddy this is the, this is not my firstborn what are you doing you know and his daddy said, no, this is the way it's going to be. Your younger son is going to prevail over your, your older son. And um, he was actually quite blind uh, by the time he passed. And 
So we are seeing people live in the Old Testament for so many years. Um, and at, at the time of the flood, God does decide that they're living too long. And he does cut their timeline. But we also see these men that are living so long that they do go blind as well. And we've seen several of the men of God go blind and not be able to see before they pass away. And um, and that's what had happened to Israel when he blessed his Jacob's children. Now, once he blesses Jacob's children, he blesses, he also talks to his uh, all the other sons um, and at the end of that, you find out that his 12 sons represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And so um, now we kind of know why God said, you know, your name is no longer um, Joseph, but Israel. I mean, Jacob. He says, your, your name is no longer Jacob, but now it's Israel. Now we know why, because his sons actually represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Things are falling into place. Um, and even if, you know, like they say, don't read from front to back, some people do, because it's really not how it happened in time. It's still flowing really well, in my opinion, because we're going we're gonna to end um, this, old, this old book of Genesis. It's a history book in the Bible. And it says that um, another thing that I thought was really interesting, and I remember the first time I read the Bible, I, I found this interesting, is that he takes his dad and he does an embalming. And so they were embalming bodies that far back. And that's pretty cool, I think. And um, they actually had a mourning for Israel for like, uh, I think it said, 30 days, 30, 33 days, or close to 40 days. Um, and that's a long time to mourn somebody, but because he was embalmed, they could do that. Um, and then they buried him in the same place that Abraham and Sarah was buried. And Rebecca was buried there. And then Leah had passed, and now Isaac. So we're going to um, end with knowing, he talks about the, his 12 sons, and it's almost like he's prophesying, you know, when he's talking to them. I'll give you one example. It says, Ishakar is a strong donkey lying down between two burdens. He saw that rest was good and that the land was pleasant. And he bowed his shoulder to bear a burden and became a band of slaves. So this whole chapter here, is, like I told you last week, is almost like poetry. And then at the end of the chapter, it says, these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father spoke to them. And he blessed them. And he blessed each one according to his own blessing. So each of the children were blessed with different blessings. Each of the children were different. And, um, and then Jacob dies and is buried. Now, it says they were buried... There they buried Abraham, Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. Okay? So then Joseph, in chapter 50, it tells about the end of Joseph's life and his children. And then we go into the book of Exodus. And what happens here is you know that Joseph was the right-hand man to the Pharaoh well, this time had passed. Now Joseph is 110 years old when he passes away. And now all of these people that came from this lineage are now in Egypt, okay? There's a new Pharaoh, according to Exodus, when we get the first chapter. We're just going to go through the first chapter. But there's a new Pharaoh, and of course he don't remember Joseph, and he's not um, who he is anymore in the land. So they, they recognize that the Hebrew people um, are large in number, and they worry about them taking over Egypt. So the Pharaoh um, asks the midwives to start um, killing the Hebrew sons um, and letting the daughters live during childbirth. Well, the two that he called, the two midwives that he called, um, 
decided that they were more scared of God than they were of Pharaoh. And they um, didn't want to kill the sons because they were afraid that God would curse them. And so Pharaoh figured it out and they let him know, hey, um, these women just go into labor so fast, they lied, that they're having their children before we can even get to them. And we can't. We can't kill them. They've already had their child. So um, Pharaoh listens to this for a little while. And then at the end of Exodus, we find out that he does make a law that all the children boys are going to be killed that are born um, there in Egypt that are with the, that are Hebrew children. And you know, and tomorrow Moses is born and we all know that Moses from being children in in in, in, in um, or even if you weren't in church you've probably seen the pictures of little baby Moses in the basket and um, how he gets saved from uh, being killed so we will talk about that tomorrow but now we understand why the Hebrews are in Egypt we understand that it was part of God's plan that he sent them there so that they would not starve to death. But now they are set, they are really in slavery and in bondage. And, um, and hence we come to the uh, new book of the Bible, Exodus. And we're going to learn a lot in Exodus. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited that we have closed the book of Genesis. And uh, even if it takes us a little while to go through it, you know, it's fun to be able to go from start to finish um, and talk about these people and figure out why things happened like they did. So now when you pick up the book of Exodus, you can see that and remember that, oh, you know, here we are in Egypt because of the... Um, Famine, you know, we had to go there to, so that we didn't starve to death. And now we are in bondage and now we have to have a way out. And God will provide a way for his people like he always does. We will talk about Moses being born tomorrow. Hopefully I will be here. Um, I hope y'all had a blessed day and I hope y'all are reading. Um, so y'all try to, you know, start reading a little bit in the first of Exodus and, and we'll review some of it tomorrow. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of anything else we need to talk about, except let's remember to keep each other in our prayers. Every time you have a quiet moment alone, try to at least, you know, have at least 15 to 30 minutes a day alone with God so that you can reflect in your mind. It's hard for the Holy Spirit to tell us people to think about or pray about or send a card to when we never stop long enough for the Holy Spirit to even talk to us. So remember that. Um, I know a lot of people that happens with them when they're driving down the road home from work. Um, but if you're like me, you're not driving down the road anymore. So we just have to have a time that we put aside, even if it's in the morning, like sometimes Chris, you know, I'll always wake up before Chris does. And sometimes I wake up before he does and I lay in the bed and that's my time to pray. Excuse me for my children and my family and for you guys as well. And um, let's just always remember each other in prayer. Um, because we all need it, don't we? Um, I just feel very blessed and I just love the Lord and I just want to say it, you know. And I hope that, um, that y'all feel the same way. Um, so let's say our prayers, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for um, the beautiful sunny day we had today where I live in Georgia. It was just gorgeous. We thank you for all of your blessings. They're all around us. And may we stop long enough, Lord, to appreciate what you have created for us to enjoy. May we stop long enough to listen to that Um that voice of the Holy Spirit so that we can minister to other people and you can live through us. Um, help us to remember each other in prayer. Help us to hold each other up. Help us to encourage one another um, and be with us as we go throughout our day tomorrow. 
May you keep our families safe and these kids safe in college and in high school and in all the places in the world. Uh, may you be with the children out there, Lord, that are being abused um, and do not have the best life at home. May you find a way into their life so that they can see your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, I will see y'all tomorrow. I love ya. And I'll try to post that, uh, some of that shopping for y'all because it's pretty cool. They have some re really neat things for affordable that you can buy for your kids or your grandkids or, um, teachers, um, just different things, you know, just different people you have to buy gifts for. Even if it's just, um, if you get together for Christmas with your family and you buy a girl gift or a boy gift. There's just a lot of good ideas there and not having to break the bank, you know. Because I know a lot of us don't have a lot of extra money at this time of year um, to spend, but we do want to do something for somebody. So, and remember, you can always make them something. But, you know, sometimes we think that it wouldn't cost a lot, but I'm telling you, just to make, like a fruit cake. If I were to want to make a fruit cake for my dad, it would probably cost me $25 to make a good fruit cake. Um... So sometimes we do spend a lot just making stuff too. So, um, oh y'all, I made those sugar cookies. Well, they're not sugar cookies, they're tea cakes. Um, when I did the Halloween cookies and I cooked the rest of them today and my kids and their friends just went crazy over them. And I said, there's something about a tea cake. They're not like sugar cookies. I said, there's something about a tea cake when you cook them until they're toasty on the bottom. When you eat one, you want another one and another one. And another one. It's like you just can't stay out of the cookie jar. And they were like, I know, it's just crazy, ain't it? And I said, yeah. And you know what they remind me the mostly, especially if you get them when they're right out of the oven, is uh, they remind me, especially if you make them kind of like a round circle and they bake and if they've been in the refrigerator um, and they rise up and you get them, it tastes just like a pound cake. It tastes just like the top crusty part of a pound cake. It is so good, y'all. Anyway, I've ate my share of those this week, and I'm, I'm glad that we cooked the rest of them today. The kids were out of school for voting, our local voting. So, y'all have a blessed day, and we will see you next time on Real Southern Woman. Love ya.